Welcome back, everyone, for some Elite Speak. We're going to be reviewing the AEW Dynamite episode from August 27th, 2020, the Thursday night edition of Dynamite. And the show kicked off with a gauntlet tag team match. It was match one. It had the Young Bucks versus the Natural Nightmares. And long story short, the Young Bucks won the match via defeating QT Marshall with a bang for your buck for the three count. I kind of missed the notes early on this one, but not much happened in the match. But most of the story elements came with the gauntlet match too. And this was the Young Bucks versus the best friends, the number two ranked best friends, Nick and chucky starts this one off chuck backs nick into his corner and tackles a few times before tagging in trent whom covers nick for a two count not long after chuck taylor later gets tad back in and nick then runs wild on both with his apron attacks and trent ruins it or stops it with a spear to Nick on the outside of the ring. Trent comes in with a knee and Chucky covers for a two count. Chuck later gets a double team arm suplex on Nick for a two count. Trent then goes for a suplex, but Nick blocks it and skirts out of the ring and tries to get to his partner, Matt, but it didn't work. Trent goes for a power driver on the ring apron, but Nick avoids it. Nick then delivers a German suplex to Trent on said apron. Matt then gets his hot tag as he runs wild on both the best friends and gets stopped via Trent. Once again, he stops a comeback. Matt then gets a springboard cutter from the corner for a two count. Trent later counters Matt's patented Northern Light suplexes with a tornado DDT just as he reached the corner. Turnbuckle. The best friends then hit their soul food half and half on Nick. And Nick later hits a 450 on Trent while being held in the ropes by Matt. And they both get a two count for their effort. Hangman later comes out and stops the Bucks from hitting their Meltzer driver finisher by holding on to Matt's legs as he was on the apron. This allowed the best friends to pick up the win via roll up on Nick. This opens up a whole new can of worms in regards to the Hangman Adam Page and Elite situation. It seems like he was a bit remorseful after it happened and he held his head down and walked back up the steps to the back with his hell with his head held low. It seems like he didn't want to do what he did, but he felt he had to. But we will learn more about this later in the night. FTR then enters the ring to face the best friends since they beat the Bucks. This is the third gauntlet match. During the break, FTR goes after Chuck's leg via the ring post. He tags in Cash and he follows up on the leg assault. uh, Cash then picks up Chuck and runs him into their corner turnbuckle. Back from the break, Chuck continues to get a beat down. He then goes for a cradle and gets a two count. Knox then gets a call wrong. I'm not sure what happened there. This is, it's as if Rick Knox didn't know if he was, was to count for a Chuck Taylor cover or not, but that kind of threw some folks off for a loop. Chuck gets robbed of a three count in that instance. Dax then gets an inverted leg lock on Chuck, and Chuck later taps out. FTR wins and earns a shot at the tag team titles for at All Out. And I predict they will be your new tag team champions at All Out as well. Kenny Omega and Adam Page are dropping those titles at All Out. You can bank on that. I would be surprised if they walk out with those titles. It's not going to happen. It shouldn't happen. That's still something to look forward to at All Out. September 5th. After that, we have a Darby vignette video. 
Darby is shown wearing Ricky Starks. Darby is shown wearing Ricky Starks' face as a mask. And he says, you really think I'm afraid of you, Ricky? Later, it shows him on a bridge. And apparently, he jumps off of it. Darby is one crazy son of a B. S-O-B. But that matchup should be good. So we can assume that we're getting that match at all out. I would think so. It should be good. Next up, we had a Lance Archer match. It was Lance versus Sean Maluta. Lance, accompanied by Jake, by the way. Jake Roberts. Lance Archer makes his way to the ring and decks someone in the crowd. Patented. Gotta love it. Lance is quick to pounce on Melita on the outside of the ring. Gives him a chop and then tosses him into the ring. He lets Maluta get in some shots, but they didn't phase him at all. Archer then suplex tosses Maluta into the ring post. Archer then bounces back and forth in between corners, wrecking Maluta in the process. He did this about three times. And Lance chokes Lance Maluta for a two count that he himself stopped. He wanted to make this guy suffer. Archer then gets, hits his blackout into an EBD claw for the win. And one thing I noticed during this match, since the crowd was back, I forgot to mention the crowds were back at 10% capacity tonight. And they really added to the show. And you can tell Lance Archer was glad to see him because it showed on his face. He was happy to be getting boos and cheers. And he got a mixed reaction, which is nice to see because it's clear that people like Lance and some folks don't want to boo him and some people are booing him. But it's kind of, it's, it's hard to not like a guy that just beats the crap out of everybody. That's cool. So yeah, he's, he's getting some good reactions from the crowds. We really couldn't tell since the pandemic started. Since uh, the, the, that day he debuted, that night he debuted was the last time we had crowds in uh, AEW. So that was quite the moment for him. After the break, Jake Roberts and Lance had words for us. Jake says there's going to be 20 men that think they have a chance of winning a battle royale. Only one man is going to walk out and it better be you. He was talking to... Lance Archer. Lance Archer lost only one match in AEW, and that was to Cody for the uh, TNT title at Double or Nothing. And Jake said that that one blemish has cost us so much time. It's time for us to leave our mark. Feeding Lance is like feeding a wood chipper. He chews them up and spits them out. Some think it's boring, but we don't. And he, was, he went on to say he loves to see men get beat up and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden we heard some music play, which cut Jake off a bit. And it happened to be Team Taz walking out. Taz with Brian Cage and Ricky Starks. Taz says the Murder Hawk won't be victorious at all out. <laughs> and then Jake said, why don't you have these guys put on some chicken suits? And Taz says he's trying to keep things calm. And then before we know it, there was a lot more other things said, but I couldn't get a chance to jot down everything. But later, Darby skateboards to the ring and kicks Starks in the face. And they feud and brawl on top of the ramp and into the tunnels to the back. This separates Archer and Cage from him. And then Archer and Brian Cage went face to face. And the crowd said, let them fight. Let them fight. It feels nice to say that the crowd, uh, crowd add to that moment. MJF and his cabinet was up next. They had a segment. MJF says, you think this is funny, Lee? He was talking to Lee Johnson. I could have sworn I saw you laughing, MJF says. And then Lee said, uh, no, I didn't. And MJF is clearly hurting from his attack that he suffered from the gutless Moxley last week. So he was selling those injuries with his neck brace and all. And followed by that, we had a Thunder Rosa and Sheeta. They had a video vignette, which is very good. It hyped up their match at All Out. 
and it made it seem important, which it should be because there is a title on the line. Sheeta's AEW World Women's title and Rosa has her NWA World Women's title. And this also could be the start of an NWA AEW partnership. It sure seemed that way based on what Billy Corgan was saying in the um, vignette to uh, brands top female talents going at it match made in heaven i think this should be a good match it should be good she has needed some competition for a while now and she will have it in thunder rosa so i hope they deliver and they should so and i also hope that this is not a one-off for rosa because AEW could definitely use her even past this match so it should be good i'm looking forward to it I'm looking forward to seeing what NWA does next with AEW. After that, we have the MJF and John Moxley contract signing, which was fantastic. Great segment. Great segment. There's a lot said during this, so I will give you what most of what I had jotted down as it was going on. MJF walks to the ring via his walker and his cabinet and the lawyer mox walks in through the crowd kinda and they erupted for him they could not wait to cheer this guy mox then hands the contract to mjf after he enters the ring the lawyer says we're here to finalize this contract mjf says as you can see john i've signed it it's all you have to do 10 times out of 10 MJF says it ends in physicality, doesn't it? These contract signings poking fun at how most of these do end in some form of physicality. MJF says, unlike you, Jonathan, I'm not an animal. I can separate business from emotion. MJF says, John is about as sharp as a marble. Since the announcement, folks have been clamoring for MJF versus Moxley. MJF always looked at Mox as a one-trick pony. MJF says he's good, and that's why he that's why the peeps love you, right? At on September 5th at All Out, we're not gonna be in a dark alley. Back, neck, or not, that's where you're in danger, MJF says. MJF said also said that Mox is a glorified goon. He's trying to get him in a trap like Moxie has done to other guys. And he wants MJF by, he said, MJF said Mox like, Mox wants him by the tables, the floors, the guardrails, everything. MJF then makes a remark towards Mox's wife. And that got John to stand up. That got him going. Moxley asked, should he sign that contract? Does he need the paradigm shift to be MJF? No. Mox said what MJF is doing is forcing him to get creative. Mox signs the contract and says, remember, nothing he says matters and nothing he signs matters. On September 5th, you're a dead man. After that, MJF then screams and says, you idiot. After that, Mox made a remark about something that he had put extra on page 17. And MJF went over to page 17. Mox says, never sign something before you read it. Next week, there will be a tune-up match, and it will be Mox versus the lawyer. Smart Mark Sterling. And if he doesn't show up, MJF doesn't get his match. Mox says, the paradigm shift will be legal in that match, and it ended right then and there. Great segment. Fantastic segment. The mic work from both was just chef's kiss. It was good stuff. I knew we were going to get some epic promo work from these two guys. They have delivered. And what more could you want? The match should be good also. Looking forward to it. Next match was an eight-man tag, which featured the Lucha Brothers, the Butcher and the Blade versus Griff Garrison, Brian Pillman Jr., and Joey Janela and Sonny Kiss. During the entrances, Eddie says, everyone is talking about him being part of the stable. These are his peeps before AEW. We're about championships, and that's why he's gonna lead them. Griff Garrison and, B- and the Blade starts the match, 
Griff gets a nice splash on Blade before all hell breaks loose. Phoenix then dives out of the ring onto Janela. Later, they get back in the ring and Griff gets a boot to Blade. Kiss then gets a tag and Hurricane Rana's Blade. And Kiss attempts a, to duck Blade, but it backfired. And he picks up Sonny and Sonny escapes later and tags in Janela. As we went to break, Phoenix Hurricane Rana's Penta into Janela. Kiss hits a backflip kick. And hits another Hurricane Rana on Phoenix. Uh, Phoenix later escapes a uh, Sunny Kiss split leg drop from the top rope. Janela later Death Valley drivers Phoenix on the apron. And Penta then package power drives Janela on the apron. Pillman Jr. then runs wild on the Butcher for a blit with kicks, chops, and strikes. And the Butcher then takes his head off with help from the blade pentagon then hits an assisted package power driver on pillman with help from phoenix running the ropes for the win after this eddie grabbed the mic after the match and addressed the crowd and they were chanting his name and he said i know my name now shut up and that's what they did exactly eddie says all five of these guys would be in the match and one of us is going to win it. Then we had one of the highlights of the show, which was the Brody Lee Dark Order celebration. Evil Uno walks out with the mic as the Dark Order brings a casket out with him. Evil Uno says the Dark Order has been on cloud nine since last week. Uno has never been this happy. He boasted about the vehicles that they bought with uh, via that win. A bunch of lawnmowers, stuff like that. The most of this uh, celebration, by the way, had a lot of references to BTE. So if you have not seen BTE, I would not imagine folks being confused here. But it's good stuff if you actually paid attention to BTE, which I have. I do. They bid farewell to the man known as Cody. Where is Cody now, huh? Uno said. He instructs him to open the casket, the rest of the Dark Order to open the casket. And it turned out to be 10 inside Preston Vance with a Cody neck tattoo. Uno says the casket has been closed on the Nightmare family to make way to a new king, the new champ. Mr. Brody Lee comes out with Anna J at this point. And each member gives a high five to Brody, except Brody didn't accept John Silver's high five continuity from BTE because those two are at odds. Hilarious stuff. Mr. Brody demands that Tony interview him in the ring. He called for Tony from the uh, announce table and that's what he did. He got up and entered the ring. Tony says he can't see anyone taking the title from Brody Lee, especially with the group he has. Mr. Brody said he was at home in prison due to people like us. He was talking to the fans. Lee said he buried the Nightmare family and says the open challenge is over. No more TV time for the Indies. And Cody will never get it back. <laughs> no more TV time for the Indies. That got me. Lee introduces... Brody Lee later introduces Anna J as the queen slayer of the group since he choked out Brandy Rhodes. Silver then says, you're the man to Lee and he gets decked in the face by Lee. <laughs> More continuity from BTE. The Nightmare family then interrupts Lee and takes out both Dustin and QT if they failed. The Dark Order took out both Dustin and QT after they interrupted uh, Mr. Brody's speech. Scorpio Sky then comes out to help and faces down Lee, but Anna J then slaps Scorpio and he gets beat down for his troubles. Cardona, Matt Cardona then comes out and takes out Uno and helps the Nightmare family get rid of the Dark Order from the ring. Brody Lee then comes back out and sees all the mess that transpired after he left briefly. Solid segment. 
it did what it had to do. It made the Dark Order look like powerhouses. And Brody Lee takes nothing. He doesn't take crap from his members. He will mistreat them to get the job done. Interesting stuff. The Dark Order is in a different place than they were at this time last year. Definitely. Night and day difference. Dasha catches up with Paige at the bar backstage. She said, why would you do this to Matt and Nick? Before he could even say anything, the Bucks interrupted and said, are you waiting on someone? He's insecure. He's insecure, Matt says. Nick says, this night you decided to be a jobber. The Bucks said he's nothing but a drunk. And Paige is out of the elite. And as they left the door, the glass shattered. Paige was looking at himself in the mirror, in the shattered mirror, and the visual was great. The whole segment, this whole segment was good. It further tells the tale of the, the, the elite is falling apart. It's telling that tale. It's good stuff. You have the worst match on the show, which was Big Swole versus Reba and Penelope Ford. I know all of these ladies can do better than what they showed us here. Once again, the women's match continues to be the low point on the shows, especially ones like this. They could have done better. That's all I can say. Both Reba and Penelope attempted to double team Swole to start, but Swole breaks it up. Penelope gets a choke on Swole via the ropes. She then tags Reba in and hits a handspring back elbow. Reba goes to the top rope, but isn't too keen with being up there. Swole then knocks her off of the ropes. Then later she gets back to the top and hits a moonsault on Swole for a two count, I believe. Reba then gets Swole up and tags in Penelope. Reba somehow grabs a crutch, but hits Penelope with it instead behind the, rap, the ref's back after Swole got out of the way. Swole pinned uh, Penelope for the win. Now Swole gets to face Baker in any match that she wants, and Swole then celebrates in the ring afterwards. So these two will have a match at All Out, and I guarantee it won't be better than cheetahs and roses just that's just how it is and i like both of swole and Britt baker i like them both but i know they can do better well especially swole i know she can do better than what she showed us in this last match so hopefully baker is in top form as she performs on at all out versus swole in some kind of stipulated match we'll we'll see what that will be next week most likely next up evil uno walks out and he has a folder which contains a contract and it says join us on the front and he ha he walks to the crowd and hands it to tay conti and she officially joins the dark order with and the Jay out there at her side, at uh, Uno's side. And the two embraced, and there you go, it's official. This means that Tay Conti is now, is now all elite, most likely. Because why would they give her a contract and not have her be part of the company? Yeah, she signed. Has to be. Good stuff there. They can use all the decent talent they can get for that women's division. Next up, we had Sammy come out with his cards. This is during the break. And he says, broken Sammy with a question mark? Not a chance. Broken Matt? Stand by. Prepare to witness the breaking of a legend, Matt Hardy. You can't delete a Spanish god. And then Sammy poses and says, hit me up. And then he rips up the card. Then at the break, we get the main event, which was Sammy Guevara versus matt hardy this was pretty good but it went pretty short because they were probably going a bit low on time hardy gets a slight headlock on sammy g and he kicks and kicks him in the stomach to start matt then throws sammy off of the ropes like a piece of garbage 
then battle to the crowd, the uh, wrestling crowd, the uh, crowd with the wrestlers at ringside. Matt attempts to whip Sammy into the guardrails, but he jumps oh, right over and dodges a chair toss from Hardy soon after that. A bit of payback from last week. During the break, Sammy G hits his GTH on Hardy on the outside of the ring. He lays him on the table and climbs into the ring. He runs the ropes and flips over the ropes to put Hardy through the table, but Hardy gets out of the way and Sammy goes through the table instead. During the break, Sammy was busted open and Matt goes to put him through, but Sammy escapes. Sammy grabs a chair from under the ring and Matt dodges it. But Matt Hardy twists the fates Sammy while his head is in between his chair. And I'm surprised that didn't break any break his neck. Hardy grabs a deleted table. It had the words delete on it from underneath the ring. And the crowd chants delete, delete, delete. Hardy attempted to get up top, but he couldn't. Sammy put Matt through this delete table instead. He took advantage of Matt's ex exhaustion and Sammy Guevara wins the match. After this, Orange Cassidy rushes to the announce table and takes out Jericho out of nowhere. He, he was running like the Flash. So quick that the camera couldn't even get a, a hold of him in time. He then hits Jericho with an orange punch not long after and they brawled to close the show. I thought it was a solid episode of Dynamite, a live episode. It, it seemed to be rushed in spots, such as at the main event. Could have shaved some time off a lot of segments to add more for that main event. Could have shaved time off the Br Baker Swole segment, or not even have that at all. You could have had shaved time off the eight-man tag. But otherwise, it was a solid episode of Dynamite. It wasn't the best, but it was good. It was good as it could be, given the circumstances. Especially with the crowds back. Definitely added a different feel. But there you have it. There's your review of the AEW Dynamite August 27th, 2020 edition. Thanks for listening.